Hello, today is April 16th. This is the University of Minnesota Shotokan Karate Club. There are so far nobody online. We have people in person and it's being recorded so you can train along later. So, thank you for joining us. Please train along. Line up! And spread because of COVID, you know. So you're in one straight line. Uh, can you go on the other side? Right? There you go. Yes. And I can't remember the name. Here. This one. Lynn. Okay. Your name. Um, the end of the semester uh, creeped up on me quicker than I thought. The last day of instruction is May 3rd, which is just a couple weeks away. I was thinking it was like another month or so. Uh, we're going to have a Q exam on May 3rd, Monday at class time. So please come. Um, you will be testing for HQ, the first test. You might be able to test if you can learn the basics in the next two weeks. You have to memorize your kata. If you follow along pretty good, but you have to practice it. Maybe you know somebody that could help you practice. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think you'll take the fifth Q test, which is a group of other tests, using hand, you will not. The fourth one. But you also have to know hey, I need on and hey, I'm sand on and hey, I'm chota. Just on the spur of the moment, if somebody says two hey, I'm sand on. So we will practice I, all of them. I know we can test We can look at it. I feel like if we had the month I thought we had, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, to get it ready to test in two weeks would be, I don't know. Um, if, if, if Huang continues to come, I assume you would test today second key, your third key now, is that true? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I have to think about it because that feels like my last week here. So uh, yeah, having hands up again, the following week. Just see how it goes. I mean, uh, yeah, so here's the big thing. A lot of people give up stuff to try to make sure they make it to karate. And I think karate should be there to help you, to enhance your life, to make things better, not to wreck your life and get in the way of class or family or job. So it's a weird balance, especially if you're coming up on a test or you're coming up on something else. So just make sure you make good choices. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am? I have a question. Do you do anything this year? Do you have a question? I have a better question first. Who's going to be here this summer? That just starts. So the ad last class is uh, the third, and the summer class starts a week after that? Um, we have to have my Maybe a week after that, we'll have class. Well, that's not the time, please. All right, so is anybody going to be here during the summer? Um, yeah. All right, one, two, three. Plenty. Plenty of people. <laughs> And believe it or not, we've oddly picked up people in the summer sometimes that come and take class and continue. So, and what about next year? Since she's asking about next year, one, two, three. No, you'll be in Princeton. Yeah, you'll be in Princeton or somewhere. Where are you going to be? New York. New York. All right. Um, <laughs> So on this first section here, before we take our break, I think we'll mostly practice the kata, and then, because uh, you can only take one class, is that true? And then we'll practice basics and the test after that. Um, so let's, uh, anybody tired of sitting like this yet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you get better at it, but. <laughs> hey! 
There you go. And you can spread around a little bit, forward and back. Pick up one foot, go around with your ankle and toes. Switch away. Other foot. Other way. Feet together around with your knees. Other way. Feet apart around with your hips. Switch other way. Use your legs, pump your arms around. Switch. Cross. Oh. Twist. Oh, you got the holes on. Um, I wanted to mention something since we have three officers. Uh, the club of Madison. They get a huge uh, in, influx every semester because in their college system, they can send an a, a email blast to every single student. So even if one in a hundred is interested in karate, they get 50 people, you know, and can we do that? I, I mean, in my day, we certainly couldn't, but. I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to do that. You should make, I mean, look around and see if there's a way. I mean, maybe nobody's ever asked. Do you get other blasts like that from yeah, other clubs? Uh, all right, pick up your heels. Just an idea. Thought it might be better than holsters. And... Yeah, when people can come to class and be in the same room, I would expect not. Up, stick, up, stick. But. Ugh. Put your hands on the floor, stick your legs, squat, straighten, squat, straighten, squat, straighten, and squat. Feet out behind you, march. I also think I'm going to be teaching at a summer camp in uh, Ohio in June. So if anybody wants to go to a three-day camp in June, then push back, touch your chest to the floor. Forward. Not a done deal yet, but there's a lot of interest. Pull your feet in, squatting. Keep it out. Stretching down and forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, reaching over one shoulder, switch, slide, switch, Around. Switch. And stop. Straighten the leg. Switch. 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 Switch, drop down. Switch, 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 and switch. All the way over. Switch the outside to side. Back. Forward. Back, over, back, over, and back. Switch, all the way over. Switch the other Back, over, back, over. Back, over, and back. Pull your feet in, body. Straight. 
Straighten your legs. Press down. Roll up on the rib. Switch. Side side. Squeeze one knee up into your chest. Switch. 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 And switch. Reach around behind the environmental pose. Switch. Switch. And switch. Check out your legs. Turn. Bring it in more. Pivot to a front stance, punching with your right hand. 
Turn it. Very good. Front snap kick with your back leg. Pivot, punch the other way. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, keep your knee up higher, eight, lift up high with your knee, nine, up high, ten, washing your roundhouse kick, pick up your back leg, roundhouse kick, lift and punch the other way. One, round, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, Rachel, nice to see you. Hey, everybody. Right? Grab anything you want. As promised, we're going to work on Kata right now. Okay. And show it up. This is the only kata that you two have to know. You're going to do it like 20 times in the next half hour here. Everybody else is going to do other stuff too. But, um, you may remember that it's in the shape of a capital letter I. It's a pattern on the floor called the M movement. And um, it's mostly block, step and punch, block, step and punch, block, block, block. Super easy. Here we go. Now, hey, I'm showing up. Boy, to the ground. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. Oh, that's you. 
students who need some work. So 
this is kind of part of transition, the next part, but I did notice some of you were a little bit too much up and down, and some of you worked a little bit in your wobble when you moved. So try to be straighter and taller, like somebody's lifting all the time. Ah, 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 ah. One of the best classes that helped is somebody said, like your head's a balloon, like it's being lifted, a helium balloon, it's being lifted, lifted, lifted. And it was like, wow, I can feel that. It feels, otherwise, you know, it gets a little heavy. So whatever helps get you straighter and taller. Your own kata, out. Kata. Good. Nice and easy, good posture. Here. So uh, one of the hardest things for me when I was training and competing, more testing, was to get rid of the idea that people are staring at you. Kind of like you just felt down and staring at me. I used to feel like that all the time. And it's the kind of thing where it's like, hey, I can do this. Yeah, I'm doing good. Oh, they're looking at me. I can't do it when they're looking at me. It, and the only thing that fixed that was to keep doing it, and it's an oddity, but you don't die. If you screw up, you're still okay. You get to do it again. So an advantage of training over and over, testing over and over, competing over and over, is you can go out and have some terrible, terrible runs, and you're still okay. And you can go out and do it again next time. And uh, part of the training is supposed to be they say humbleness, uh, you're supposed to be getting rid of your ego. And if you're always worried about, oh, people are looking at me, how do I look? I hope I, you know, that's not the right way to be thinking. You need to worry about you and how you are doing on the inside. It's a weird thing. But I, I remember the constant struggle. I still feel it sometimes. So just keep doing the best you can. And that's true of, for all of karate. You only have to do the best. So here's a weird exercise. This is the idea that your center is going to reach your foot out and then pull it back. Do that. Reach, pull it back. Reach, pull it back. Reach, pull it back. Do the other foot. Reach, pull it back. So ideally, I'm supposed to start like this and not switch my weight over here and then reach. I'm supposed to stay here and reach where my leg, my balance is in between my feet. So imagine your center reaches. Reach, pull back, and reach, pull back. Try forwards, oddly a little different. Uh, you want to drop and put your foot in front. One, and since we're this far, we're going to put it back. Two, foot in front. One, two, one, two, and stand up. Other foot. One, Two, one, two, one, two, stand up. 
So the hard part with the forwards and backwards is keeping your body stable. For some reason, going sideways, you're relatively stable because it's not people aren't that bendy, but all your joints go forwards and backwards. So when people try to step forward and they try to keep, they tend to go, they're, they're just backwards, everything moves. Don't do that. Try to stay very stable. Try not to stand with your hands on your hips. There you go. So we are going to step forward this way into a front stand. I'm in and out with your footwork, turn and you want to keep it up. You step forward with your right foot. Three, four, sorry, right side is not letting me do Now step forward with your right foot. One. Left foot, two, three, four, 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 step forward, doesn't matter, as long as you stay straight and tall, I'm wiggly, five, in and out, so eventually, since I said any movement, any movement, as long as you move, right, you're just practicing, <laughs> so hi back up, this is Kata, we're going to do the hand turn on this way, you're going to imagine that you stand here, your center reaches, your body stays straight. We go one, okay, nice and straight. Two, glide forward. Three, one, reach. Not one, two, three. Can you see the difference? Try to lift from your center, but don't bend your body. So hands put up, out. Nice and easy. Boy, hands put on, one. Two, three, five, four, five, one, just move. One, two, three, four, one. Find your way, that's what I meant. 
One, I'm up and my hip is up, that's wrong. So work at smoothing it out. Bring your knees and elbows in, point at the target. We've done similar drills to this, it's been a while. But I do basics this way all the time. Because I think it helps, you know, even just one, two. One, two. It keeps people from twisting their hips too soon and not having a rock. Here we go, hands shut up. Out. Get up. Good. One. Two. One. Squeeze your elbows in, your knees in. Don't punch up. Don't punch up. Two. Switch. One. Squeeze and look. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Hold. Two. One. Elbows in, knees in, head up tall. Pull your growing arm. Two. One. Squeeze. Two. One. Squeeze. Two. Now you're going to turn this far. One. Turn your right foot, your knees are in. Two. One. Elbows in. Two. One. Turn. Two. Downward block. Take your down. One. Two. One. Squeeze and look. Two. One. Elbows and knees in. Like you're coming from wide to narrow. Two. Punch. One. Two. One. Two. Turn this far. One. Hold. Two. Shot. One. Squeeze. Two. Shot. One. Hold. Two. One. Two. Higher. Higher. Everybody must get the idea. You can kind of pull together and prepare and then you stop. Your own kata, I count. You can break it down any way you want for one, two. The exception is if you have a kick or a leg lift, that's a squeeze. So if you're doing busted eye, I want you to go one, two, to show that you have that shot. Or one, two. Four, one, two. No. Like all that do. That'd be a foolish waste of our time, wouldn't it? Here we go. Out. Catch up. Repeat. Good. So yeah, no nonsense. But generally, I would count this as one because it's kind of your preparation. Two drive. One, that's fine. Two, put your shoulder down. This is doing this thing. One, so sometimes, like if you stand up, one, you'll just be off my count, but it's still two counts for each move, so whatever you need to do. Two, one, Hand reaches. Okay. And this will do a downward walk. Two. Down over. Then take this one. Two. A little more extended. Out to the side. One. Two. Snap and hold. One, reach. Give your legs a side. Two. One. Go to the side. Two. Go to the side. One, reach. Two. Go to the side. One more up. One. Two. One, two, 
Now, there are several theories on why there are slow moving kata at all. Uh, one of them is to emphasize the expansion contraction of your body. So, like, hey, on, or sorry, uh, manga, a whole kata that goes squeeze, expand, contract, squeeze, expand. I mean, the whole thing is in slow motion. But probably you wouldn't actually be blocking somebody in slow motion. Probably you would have to do it quickly, right? One reason is for emphasis of timing or position or a drop, something that takes a little bit more time so you go, whoa, because if you screw it up, it doesn't work at all. So they do it slow over and over again so you get the muscle memory. One reason is just because there were two schools of thought about karate. Uh, one of them was quick and light, pow, 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 pow. One of them was slow. Oh, and they did everything slow. So we want to put them together so they stuck slow moves in. So you see, we represent both people, both groups. We're good. But uh, over time, which moves are done slowly and which moves are done quickly has changed. Uh, so that's weird. But So there's not like a law that says, well, because I do it slow in my kata, I have to do it slow always. It's just a practice. So, I found that to be one of the more freeing things, is to have to do slow moves quickly. So, blah, blah, blah. one, two, starts to go one, two, three, four, it's just quick. One, one, two. Although I do think those are probably done a little slower, because there's a rhythm to the other person's body. Running out of time, so we have to do one more kata with speed. Your own timing, ki at the ki eye points. We're all going to do hand shodan, so these guys can join along. First, hand shodan. Good spirit. Out. Kata. Boy. I do want to talk about, uh, I know I've mentioned this a million times, it's something old and they don't know, so they don't know. As you progress through your kata, hand shown on hand, hand on hand, hand on hand, hand on hand, hand on hand, whatever, don't forget to go back and fix your kata. Because they stay the way you learned them. So if you're testing for first degree left belt shodan, and they say, do hand on knee on, and it looks like it did when you passed it three years ago as an orange belt, that will not impress people. They go, that's terrible. And many people have that mentality. Well, I already did that. I can do the more advanced ones now. But the most basic ones, like kind of like in everything, are the most important. Uh, music, math, karate, learning basic stuff is important. You can't just forget it and do all the advanced stuff and then get why the advanced stuff. But I see that in the people doing hand showdown. You do your own kata now, pretty darn good. And you do hand showdown, and your hip pops up and down like your old habits. So it's just a little stuff here and there, but it's still worth fixing. Your own kata, good spirit, out, kata, boy.
Yep, remember the back side system, the back leg off. Okay, here we go on the next part. So now we're going to work on less basics. We're first going to go through the ACU basics for Lynn and Renee. You have to remember that pattern, it's relatively short, and then you're going to do that over and over again when we do their stuff. So hang out right there, it's fine. Uh, feet together, out, starting position. Left arm, left leg forward, get in the eye, and you should keep eyes short. You have good spirit. Hey! Good spirit. All right, uh, seven punch uh, three times for the center. Uh, I'll just say one, you seven punch three times. One, oh, oh, oh. Yep, that's fine. You can be a little deeper in your stance, a little more, uh, step out longer. Yep. Now step back, rising block three times. One, back, back, back. Yep. Try to make sure your arm glides along your body and then comes up to the end. So this is a lot for somebody who's only on one block, so we'll do we'll break it down more than this too. Moving forward, outside block. This time it's gonna coil up high and then twist. One, twist, twist, twist. Moving backwards, inside block, come underneath and block. One, two, here, come. Your elbows go across your center and out. So work it down. Moving forward, nine turn block and a back stand. So this is the one that's back. Eight. One, two, this edge. So this is like one leg punch and you stop. Now move backwards and do the same thing. So this hand's gonna block. Ah. Yep. Move back. Two more. Yep. One more. Perfect. Fighting position. You put your arms up. And you're gonna do a front snap kick three times. Hey! Back foot. One, two, three. Yep. You have to pick your knee up higher and recoil and then come down. Turn, do it again. Sooner. Ah! Snap. 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 Yep. Keep it up. Uh, turn. Turn and face this way. Okay, in the first test, the next step, roundhouse kicks also. So you have to pick your knee up, spin your hip, and round up. Ah, uh, snap, snap, snap. Yep, turn it away. Snap, snap, snap. Cue it up. Facing the mirror, basically. You're going to cross behind. You're going to cross behind and kick with your heel. So it's a side kick. This foot, your back right long goes behind. Nope. Move this way. Almost. So stand like this, face down. Yep. Now this foot goes like this. Yep. Now you're going to keep me with this foot. That heel, kick here. Yep. Turn your leg. Heel. Turn. Heel, heel, heel. That's your toe. Heel. You just stomp on Let's go. Let's see who's going to come. One. Cross behind. Kick. Excellent. Two. Cross behind. Kick. Turn your hips towards the floor. The 
this way. Three. Good. Turn the way. slightly more complicated things, but you're just going to keep doing those basics. Okay? <sighs> I will tell you what to do. And right now for orientation, you just do it three times and then we'll do the next thing. So, I right, left leg forward, down and clock, right? Hey. You guys are going to do stepping punches. You are going to do a triple punch. I know that, even though I can see it. And you are going to do a jab step triple punch, just like you want. So, maybe you already know, on that one, push off your back leg. Drive and then do the next triple punch. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Uh, say that again. Yes. Ready? Punch again. All three gone. Stepping backwards, rising lock, rising lock counter punch, rising lock front kick counter punch, rising lock front kick counter punch. Take your front leg. <laughs> Try one for each pound. Okay, so you're just gonna step back and block one. One block one. No, why? No, just one. Two. Two. Three. Moving forward. Outside block double straight back and straight counter punch. Outside block, same thing. Outside block double straight back and straight counter punch. Outside block, elbow straight, back to straight. Outside block. Awesome. I can see it. Oh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Moving forward, ready? One for each count again. One. Yep, we don't usually back up our hands. It's not a bad thing to do. We look at that. We just do one. In the middle, you use your palm to back up your elbow. Which is an excellent technique, it's just not in this time. Two. Shoulders down, John Well. Three. John Well, make sure you don't block so high. Block down low. Yep, when you block. Yep. Moving backwards. Inside block for the eight few people. That's what it's neat. Stand there, make sure your head is concentrated. Zen. Moving backwards. Inside block counter punch. Inside block jail counter punch. No, uh, you can only count, okay? Yes, you kick, you go. You go block, jab, counter. Ready? One for each. One. Two, three. Body has to project forward. Still a little more. 
слишком громко. Я сначала говорю. Moving forward, right hand block in a back stance. Right hand block, front kick, spear hand strike. Right hand block, front kick, spear hand strike. Right hand block, front kick, spear hand strike. Shoot. Fantastic. Here we go. Ready? One. Back stance, front kick, try. Move one. Two. Awesome. Three. Sure, that's good. Everybody backwards, same techniques. One. Block, kick, strike. Good, done well. Twist your hip on the strike. Ew. Keep your knee up just a little bit longer, Rachel. Three. That was better. Everybody from your left leg in front. Or the weight should be in the back. You two have to switch your feet. Front snap kicks, front leg, back leg, front leg, back leg, front leg, back leg. Everybody except you two. You just do front snap kicks moving forward. Let's do all three. Ready? Yeah! You got it. Yep. Turn. Do it again. Hey! So when you forget, you pop your head and shoulders. You don't need them. It's all in your lower body. It's straight and tall. Turn. Round those kicks the same way. Hey! Good job, you guys. Good. Good. All right, here we go. Hey! All right. You have to do the cross behind, side kick, step and punch. You also do the cross behind, step and side kick, step and punch. Side kick, moving to your left. You gotta do that? No. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, three of them. Two of them. Uh, both feet are side of it. Yep. And then cross me behind and kick. Hey! Good job. You wanna do that one? Keep going. Turn. You guys do the other side. Back thrust kick, counter punch. Back thrust kick, counter punch. Ready? Okay. The cross band side kick. Can you do it that way and I have to do this way? So you need to make sure there's direction down in here. Right and and yours is so much this way. Then drop. Two more. That's it. Not bad. Should be sharper. Thank you.
What's that brought up in time? You are also going to do a function brought up in time. Oh. You haven't done a back cross kick, right? So three back cross kicks that way and then three that way. Stand, turn, <laughs> left leg front. You guys can practice whatever you want. You can start over, you can do your side kick. Here we go, three times. Hey! You're doing back cross kick. Yep. Now the other one. Yep, all three. Front, round, punch. Yep. So the test that we build on used to be Nishiyama's interpretation of the JK test. So it was almost the same as the JK test, but just a little different. And then uh, the Shiwa Ri organization changed it because really the basics that they practice on the test were made up by 25 year old kids out of college. It's not like they were made up by masters who went out on the year. It was a new thing. So there are, we believe, some flaws in the basics, especially if they want it to lead to something. So if you want to be able to use the back thrust, you should practice it. That's why it's now we put it in the basics. It didn't used to be there until on the test or something at Black Belt. And um, the inside block, you didn't have to do until Brown Belt. So we put it in at the beginning. That's what our white belts have to do. Um, the combination, like from the roundhouse kick, is something people do in sparring but never shows up in any test. Well, why not practice it? And uh, it'll help, it doesn't even have to be that particular combination, but it'll teach you to use your body to manipulate both techniques. So we tried to kind of build on if we're going to use it for Tumi Bay, what would, is it useful? No. Still a work in progress. There's some things in there I don't like. I'm not a big fan of the cross behind and step and punch. That used to be a side thrust, step and punch, or a round up kick, side thrust, step and punch. I thought that was, it taught you more, even though you probably never use it, but I thought it was taught you more. How about side kicks? Do you recommend side kicks? Side snap. We took those out of the basics, but we left them in the top. So, the when the side snap, were done in cut. They were this way. They were attached by somebody's leg growing. And then when it got into the college, all of a sudden people were teaching higher. And then they're walking funny. It's later. Because your hips aren't made to move that way. So when you do a side snap kick, it is good to move your hip towards the target because there's a coil here that is comfortable but you still have to be careful where you move. And the problem is people try to kick head height no matter what you tell them. And so you have people kicking and rocking their hip. So they took it out as a repetitive over and over again technique, but they left it in the category once in a while. So it's not an R test basics uh, until the front snap, side snap, side thrust, roundhouse type combination. And then, um, that's also why they changed the side kick. We learned to cross in front, when your foot drops, your knee comes up, you pivot, thrust, three coil pivot and down. That takes forever to learn. It, it's a very precise thing. I think it teaches you stuff. Uh, but, without question, it requires a lot of torque on your hip. That may not be good for it if you do it every day all the time for 20 years. We, we, don't, we don't know for sure. So they decided this sets up your kick without the torque. There's no twisting. So I said okay to that. And yet if you look at this position and this position, they're the same torque on your hip even though it has a different direction. But nobody wants to take roundhouse kick out because they like it. But I know that roundhouse kicks are not good for my hip. 
And I've been very, very careful about how I get some stuff. Um, so what they're trying to do is stuff that's good for you, healthy, and build good dynamics and useful techniques. It's a very delicate balance of what to do. In the old days, uh, in Karate and Secret, they didn't have keyhole, they didn't have basics, they had top hats. They had some partner drills, then they had body conditioning. Uh, lifting weights, moving things, getting beat on, partner work, we'd be on each other's arms. But uh, not the repetitive basics. Even when Nishiyama started, uh, they only had a couple. And they said, well, why don't we just practice this part and then we'll get better at it. Oh, okay. So they kept adding to the basics. They did one person's life class. They went from no basics to basic life. And also, there was a, uh, so Funagoshi, this guy, learned karate in Okinawa in secret, one on one, from a master. I think he learned the self defense karate. By the time he got to be 20, uh, karate was being taught more in the school system and more in the general public, and they changed it to make it more appropriate so kids wouldn't poke each other's eye out or break each other's knees. You close the fist, and you hit him, oh, he'll get back up, he's okay. Um, so he took that system to Japan and introduced it, and they liked it, and they continued to build it, and uh, the Japanese did not particularly like the Okinawans. They thought they were these backward hick peasant people. And um, they said, okay, we'll let you in. So as it happened, Funakoshi was well liked by uh, Jigeru Kano, who started Judo. And he was well respected. He was an informal ambassador. He was, everybody, uh, he founded Judo. They were like, oh my God, the greatest guy in the world. And, uh, he was actually a professor at a university which had great prestige, which is why a lot of Juno people, when they get a high rank, they call him professor, even though they're not professors, but he was a professor. It's a silly thing. <laughs> so it's, uh, anyway, he sponsored karate. And uh, the other, the Botukukai, which was the Japanese Martial Arts Association, did not like that. But they said, oh geez, uh, you know, Jigeru Kano is sponsoring them, we'll let them in. But you have to have Katsukiyo and Kumite, because all of our other arts have Katsukiyo and Kumite. And you have to wear a uniform. Before that, they just trained in their underwear, and because in Okinawa, it's hot, and they weren't particularly worried about not being dry. And they trained at night, because it's supposed to be too cool. So they just go there, pick up the clothes, train, and put the clothes back on, and leave. It wasn't and they feel about it, but they, Japanese thought that was not quite proper, so our uniforms came from copying the judo uniforms. Uh, the uh, uh, Funakoshi just made them lightweight instead of the heavy, and he copied the belt ranks, because in Okinawa they didn't have belt ranks, or colors. It was just who you, you knew who was better than you, <laughs> and, and you studied with them. And so then the rank thing became a whole thing. Uh, so then, Actually, in 1936, the Botukukai sent representatives to Okinawa and said, okay, here's the deal. We're going to let you guys be a legitimate martial art, but you have to have the Kyuandan ranking system, you have to have uh, Kata Kiyo and Kumite, and you have to wear uniforms. And almost all of them complied to a certain degree. Some of them said, screw you guys, that's not real karate, we're just going to keep doing what we do. But the Funakoshi pushed it big time in the colleges. It changed the expression of what it was, and uh, it became more competitive, more athletic. Uh, although he was Funakoshi, so he had very dedicated people that would train hours a day, and they would hurt themselves, their knees or their hips or something. He said how foolish it is to practice something and get injured when it's supposed to be for your health. So he said, no, no more of this four hours a day training, maybe 15 minutes at a time. That's what he thought was best. Um, but he was, you know, like 80 by then, so it was a huge change of time. He uh, used to talk about staying up, the true karate man, the true karate cop, would stay up half an hour past his family to train. 
and get up half an hour before his family to train. And if you're thinking about it like how your brain works, the last thing you're practicing is your cognitive your movements. Your brain works on its processes all night. The first thing you do is get up and practice what your brain's been doing all night. It's a fantastic learning method. So if you want to study anything, I would recommend that. Spend 15 minutes or half an hour at night studying it. Get up and do it right away in the morning and you'll be kind of amazed how that really works out. So anyway, that was an example about why we do basics at all. They, they mandate that we do them and how we interpret them. But it had a variety of impacts. It, it uh, made a large group of people get better instead of just one or two people that happened to catch on what to do. Uh, they kind of lost all of the self-defense applications because that didn't matter to them. Um, the public version, this is the last thing I say, and then we'll go back to doing basics. The, um, in private, the karate, oh, so now I have to explain this. In Okinawa, it was a very unhealthy place to live. Uh, there was no food, there was no nutrition, there was very little medicine, and uh, people would die in their 20s and 30s a lot. Very few people made it. Even in the royalty, the special food and doctors made it to 35. So it was a tremendous study. <clears throat> but these karate guys would walk around healthy at 60, 70, 80 years old. Can you imagine? Oh, my grandfather trained with that guy. Look, and he's still here. I can't believe it. You know, two relatives dead, and this guy's still here. They're magic. Right? And all of it really was was physical activity that they did every day. Uh, so the primary reason to study was for your health. That's why Tony Koshi started. He was born sickly. They said he's not going to live three years, maybe five. And he got to be about eight. And they said, well, if he lived this long, <laughs> what should we do? And they said, maybe we should put him in with karate. So they did. And he said he, uh, he didn't like it at first, but he realized after a few months of training, he could run and play with the kids on the playground, and he couldn't do that before. He was always a very sickly kid. So oddly, after being a sickly kid and starting karate, he never got sick again until he died at 89 years old. Um, he bragged about it. He went in his book. Didn't take any medicine, didn't take any vaccinations, slept with, on a thin little mat with one blanket, because that's the way real men sleep. But he didn't. He, he, he thought the cushy life was made people too soft. Um, but in private, you studied it for your health. You studied it for self-defense to keep yourself or your family safe, and you studied it for your own self-development. How do I become a better person? How do I any study of anything in depth and to give people a little deeper understanding of things? But the public version was primarily so the Japanese could conscript the soldiers, make them in make the Japanese, or sorry, Okinawan people into soldiers. So the emphasis became calisthenics. So instead of uh, the stances being like this, which is what they were, build your legs up, nice strong driving thing. Uh, discipline, each, e, one, each. Everybody has to move at the same time, that's what soldiers have to do. And then spirit, charge, so self-defense wasn't even in the ballpark of what they cared about. They cared about making potential soldiers. So anyway, karate got bigger and stronger in some ways, but they got some parts that got left out, which is why I worked so hard on trying to get the applications in there when we can actually look to each other and we can learn them. Now, of course, nobody can get close to you, so of course they can attack you. Hey, dude, six feet, right? Just remind them. Didn't you know? Six feet. Anyway, I'm sure we have to do something else now. <sighs> you two, well, you anyway, have to round nose kick, back thrust kick, counter, uh, back fist grip, counter punch. You remember that? Round nose kick, back thrust kick, round, back, back fist grip, oh, right. counter punch. Yep. You. Uh, no, it's kick, back thrust, kick, counter punch with no back thrust. So you're moving forward, start with your back leg, round nose, back thrust, counter punch. Yep, yep, perfect. Did you do your back thrust 
You have to do, start with your back leg, do a front kick, do the other leg roundhouse kick with a counter punch. So it's a combination, front kick, roundhouse kick, counter punch. Yep, everybody turn and face that way. You guys are doing anything that you want. Uh-oh, we lost everybody. Oh, Rachel's back. All right, did John Noel say he had to go? Uh, he didn't say anything. Okay. Wait. Yeah, he did, in the chat. Okay. All right. Everybody get your combination. Uh, let's do one of each, I'll count three times. Ah! Oh, 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 very good. If this is a little deeper, make sure you're hitting a little bit more of the, the toes. See you! Control test with the target moving up and down. Left foot forward, front punch. Oh, yes. And draw, punch and hold. Draw, punch and hold. Do it again, but strong leg. Yeah. Draw. Left foot strong. Again. Again. And as fast as you can go. Feels like 
So uh, all of you, when we do practice the test with speed, it'll feel terrible, especially when you have to do it yourself. Don't let that bug you. We have like six more sessions if you do online or four more before the actual test. So the, there's some shock to going with speed the first time or two, but it goes away after you practice a couple times. It would help if you practiced on your own. I myself made a big mistake uh, where I would practice over and over and over again, and I always went half or three quarter speed, and I'd always fix stuff. I'd be like, okay, well, my shoulder was gonna bend. Oh, my mind's great. Uh -huh. Okay, and then just, oh. and then I had to go with speed, and I'm freaking out, like, no, this isn't right, my shoulder, I, was, I had this thing in my head all the time. So, to get rid of that, do your warm-up, uh, you can go to it slower, whatever you want, and then say, okay, I'm going to test now. Ready? Go. Because the shock part is what you're trying to get rid of. And then you'll get less critical of yourself and you'll get more confident after you've done it two or three times. Because the next time it won't be as bad. But the big help I made on my testing or competing was to go with speed. Don't fix yourself. Don't change your stances. Just do it the best you can. Which doesn't mean to go so fast that you can't control what you're doing. So your kata still has a rhythm, it still takes time. One more time, everyone kata, then we'll go. Give yourself some room. Bow. Kata. Okay. I will ask again, and this time say it loudly with good spirit. Kata. Thank you. Thanks for coming.